Hey friends, welcome to the Push Patterns channel. My name's Craig. In this video today, we're gonna to sort out how we can get our MIDI controller set up with Ableton Live. Let's jump straight into Ableton and see how we get all this set up. First thing we need to do is ensure that our MIDI controller is connected to our computer. This can be done by the USB lead up here and then connecting it to your computer. Then look for some life on your keyboard, see if the lights come on, if there's a display, that means it's got power and we're ready to rock and roll. Next thing we need to check is is Ableton Live receiving any MIDI notes or any MIDI signal? You can do this where these little two kind of dots at the top here, if I click on a key, see the top one flashes that says, I am receiving signal. We're not hearing any sound yet because there's a few things we need to do. First thing we need to do is go to our preferences. So we do this by pressing command comma on a Mac or control comma on Windows. We then need to go down to the link tempo and MIDI tab, then down to ports. We should see the option of in and out and the name of your MIDI controller here. If at this stage you do not see your MIDI controller option here, that means you may need to download an additional driver for your MIDI controller. This can be found on the manufacturer of your MIDI controller's website. Next thing we need to do is talk about the different settings here, which track, sync, remote, MPE. Ignore MPE for now, we do not need to worry about it. In deals with MIDI messages coming in from your MIDI controller to Ableton Live. Out deals with Ableton Live sending MIDI information out to your controller. So let's have a look at the types of messages we want to send in. So we want to send in track, which basically means musical MIDI notes. So be to be able to control instruments with the key bed here to make some music within Ableton Live. The next thing we want to turn on is remote. So that basically enables us to control remotely parameters within Ableton Live's interface, audio effects, MIDI effects, and software instruments, such as the amount of reverb on an audio effect. We could map it to this dial here and just manually adjust it remotely on this controller. The next option, sync, which we do not have selected on the input, but we have it selected on the output, is essentially a tempo sync button, but the sync decides which one you would like to be the kind of the master. With output, that basically means I'm going to send the clock information or the tempo of Ableton out to my MIDI controller. If there's any tempo based sequencing, such as beat repeat or arpeggiators, you can do this on your controller. As a default, it's usually set to its own internal clock. Now you can do a bit of menu diving within your MIDI interface and choose external sync. Then if you select this in Ableton Live, your MIDI controller will automatically map up to Ableton Live. Now at one point people have done that and then pressed the chord now and gone, it's still not working you need to engage the transport playback. At the moment, it's not sending the tempo information. As soon as you press play, it is now sending like the pulse or the heartbeat. It's like the drummer has started the song. You can't start the song without the drummer, essentially. So now we've got our preferences set up. Play our keyword, still no sound. Oh man. First, we need to find a sound that we would like to control within Ableton Live. So let's go to the browser tab here. Go down to instruments. And I'm gonna select wavetable to start off with. Drag it onto an empty MIDI channel. Let's play. Oh no, still no sound. Okay, one last step, which is this record enable here. Essentially the on button for the channel to receive MIDI notes. Fantastic, we have MIDI notes. Now just a little bit of housekeeping. Now we can select what MIDI controller the MIDI messages are coming from. So if you have multiple controllers set up, so if you have a drum pad or a launch pad, you can select which one. This is good so you don't get any crosstalk. So say like if you wanna play drums on one pad, I don't know, play a melody on another one, play a bass line on another one, they're not all gonna play each other. Now if you have it set to all and all channels, that means that it's just gonna hear MIDI messages from anywhere on any channel. So if we select the actual controller that you want this channel to control, then you can choose the exact MIDI channel. And this is quite good if you have say like some notes here, and some pads. You see the pads are playing notes there as well. But if you look down in this list, this is on channel one, this is on channel 10. So if I put this to channel one, now then those pads are not controlling those notes, but I still have them there. So I could open up another MIDI channel here, do the same thing, but when I go down the channel, choose the channel that the pads are on. On the track, then go to instruments, let's, let's go to drums, Bring in a drum kit, and there we go. If I... mm. 
See then essentially my MIDI controller is turned into two different instruments. They're not talking to each other. Next thing is the, the mapping of things we talked about with the remote option. So we can do this by pressing Command M or Control M on Windows. Also have the option up here to turn it off or not. Once you turn it on, everything goes kind of a purpley blue and our browser area here changes. This is just gonna show us a list of all the mappings that are in our session. There are none at the moment, so let's create some. So I'm just gonna simply click on the dial that I would wish to map to a dial on my controller, which I want the reverb and the delay send. So I'm gonna click A and then just turn the dial on my MIDI controller and see it's picked it up. And let's do the same dial for the delay. There we go. So now let me turn the mapping off by pressing the same shortcut or clicking up here. Okay, hopefully that video helped you and got you set up with your MIDI controller within Ableton Live. Any questions or any problems, please drop it in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn on any for notifications so you don't miss a video. Hopefully I'll see you again on this channel soon. Bye for now.